I just introduced myself as Anne McGay and my clan from the Navajo Nation. Um, we're living in Los Angeles area now. Uh, my daughter's a filmmaker. She's also the daughter of Leonard Peltier. And uh, we've been living out there for almost 10 years now. Um, oh my God, it's so difficult living out there because you have all kinds of different people there. I used to put them in categories like, you know, the Palo Indians, the Hollywood Indians, this Indian, that Indian, all different kinds. And I used to get so tired because they would tell me, what do you know about AIM? What do you know about Peltier? You're just a Johnny come lately. I said, yeah, to LA. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, a lot of them don't know where I started from and what, I, uh, what my family's about. I, people used to tell me, you're just, bitch. You're just so mean. And I think that's because when I was growing up, I came from a medicine family. My grandfather was a medicine man. My a grandmother was a hand trimmer. My mom is a crystal gazer. Uh, she does her healings through that. Uh, I don't like to say my, uh, white man's name, but my grandmother's brother, who I consider my grandfather, was a, uh, a singer in a Navajo way, and my other grandfather, my grandmother's brother, Charl Charlie, he was a roadman for the Peyote Way. And coming from all that, we really had a structure. And when I left the reservation back in the mid-60s, I thought everybody was like that. And I would get mad at these uh, young kids who would say, yeah, I'm Indian, I'm Indian, and then they go off and do drinking and all that, and I said, wait a minute, no, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. And I would talk to them, and they wouldn't listen, I would talk to them again, they wouldn't listen, then finally I'd smack them over the head and say, wait a minute, you sit down here and you listen. So after that, I got that beautiful title of being the queen bitch. But nowadays, the young generations that I talk to, they listen, they sit down and they listen and they ask questions. What happened back then? What happened here? What happened there? Who was here? Who was there? And it's really nice to, to, to hear those questions. Where were you at this point? What did you do? How did you meet? I said, no, that's off the, that's, that's off the charts. You're not going to find that out. But, uh, you know, I started in the movement in the very, very beginning, in the early 70s. I worked with uh, Clyde's brother, Vernon Belcourt, in the Denver AIM office. And uh, from there we did a whole bunch of things. That's where I met Madonna and Yvonne and some of these other people who are oldies, but goodies. <laughs> and, but we've known each other for a long time. We hardly ever see each other except in groups like this, at meetings like this, at conferences. And it's really good to be able to know. They, I think we re-energize each other by being together, by talking together, and, and just telling stories about what we're doing at what level, who we're talking to, what funding we are doing, how the programs are uh, working in our areas, just different kinds of things, and it's so good to hear that. One of my really big pet peeves is about the honoring of women. There's none, not in the LA area. I'm a veteran of two things, the American Indian Movement and the United States Army. I'm honored in the, in the American Indian Movement by being who I am. But in the United States Army, in Denver, I was the post commander. In LA, I was just like, that one time one guy came up to me, he says, hey Ann, you're always bitching. So why don't you go out there and carry the flag in? You know what I told him? No. And I told him no because of the way he asked. I was not going to do that. My bitching, you bet your life, because I want to see all those other women veterans honored. 
One of my best friends, Regina Brigg, is a United States Army, I mean, United States Navy veteran. I honor her, and I honor all the other women who were um, service veterans, but I honor more the women who stood for us in the Wounded Knee at Kashina, at Fairchild's in New Mexico, and all the other places that we have been confronted with, because we were there right be alongside the men. And so you honor the two, both men and women, because we all stand together. We don't stand apart. Look at us. We're all sitting together. We need to do this. We need to honor each other. Thank you. Hello, my name is Corrine Fairbanks, and um, I first uh, got introduced to AIM in 1986 um, out in uh, Big Mountain, Arizona. But I didn't really get involved with AIM until um, the early 90s with Fern, Fern Mathias, who was the um, executive director of the Southern California chapter of AIM. And um, I learned a lot. We both did. I met my husband at the same time, and uh, we learned a lot about what to do and what not to do in starting a chapter. And there was a couple of things that she had um, mentioned to us, and sometimes Fern would say things as a joke, you know, one of the things she'd say is, uh, be, you know, beware of anyone with big egos. You know, and uh, I remember someone had introduced themselves as a warrior, and the first thing she said was, yeah, right, they're probably not a warrior. Beware of anybody who claims to be a warrior, because they're probably not. Your community or your chapter will know who's a warrior, but for someone to claim to be a warrior, they're probably not. The other thing she would warn us about is New Agers, and even people that claim to be traditional would, also, would often be New Agers underneath. And I see that a lot, especially for those of us that are on Facebook. You'll see all of these people that claim to be traditionalists, but then they're doing some really weird stuff, and it's all under the guise of being New Agers. And it could be as simple as, you know, um, since we live in an urban situation too, there's a lot of people that um, know they're native, they know what tribe they are, but because of the disconnect, they're not near where their people are. They're gonna go to uh, an organization or meet a group of people and look for that guidance. But um, women need to stay with women. Women need that medicine from other women. Men stay with men and they need that medicine from other men. A woman should not go to a man to look for that kind of medicine and guidance just as a man should not go to a woman and look for that guidance. There's reasons for that separation, and the firm was very, very clear about that. Um, and that's, again, one of those New Agers, having those people that claim to be traditional, and then they mix those co-ed sweats, or they mix those ceremonies, and then they do a little weird thing, you know, with, um, well, hey, I could show you what you need to know. I mean, it's all under the guise of having an ulterior motive, and that happens in our communities. Unfortunately, that happens in our AIM chapters. When you've been working very closely with a group of people for a long period of time, you have to see yourself as a family. You can't see yourself as a place to snag. You cannot snag a brother and sister in your AIM chapter. Because the way Fern explained it to us, the way we lived in our AIM chapter, is that you know our AIM chapter was um, organized for if, a, if you're in an AIM action and a bullet comes towards you, you have to know that everyone is going to have your back. Not that someone's going to sidestep and go, oh, okay, you can get the person behind me. And that was something that we learned um, working with Fern and, and when Yvonne and I were talking the other night about how we wanted to organize this, this, um, this panel, one of the things that we talked about was having agitators and disruptors and people that don't even know that they're probably working with the feds and how they agitate and disrupt chapters. I've seen it happen in Fern's chapter, we had a problem happen in our own chapter, I've seen it happen in other chapters where people do the work that the feds want them to do by disrupting their chapter. And it starts off with talking negative here, talking negative there, talking negative here. And it could be male or female. And it, nothing brings down a chapter faster than watching that happen. And um, so I was really, first of all, I'm very honored to be here at this conference, but especially honored to be in this table with these beautiful women that I, I idolize and have deep amount of respect for and learn from every time I speak to them. But um, that was just one of the things that I wanted to throw out there um, that, I've, that I've worked with, that I've seen, and, and kind of uh, be uh, concerned about with the women in this room and, and the men in this room, that this panel is really for men and women to learn from. Give me some way greetings again, my relatives. Like I mentioned this morning, my name is Morning Star Dali. I'm a member of the Achimawi Band of the Pit River Nation. Um, I was born in the AIM House in Oakland, California in 1979. 
um, that Bill Wapapa was running at the time, and I was, I believe, the, the first of a number of home births um, at the time because Oakland had the second highest infant mortality rate in the nation. And so um, my mother, along with a number of my aunties, decided that it, it would be much safer for us to be born at home. And so um, it's an honor to be here on this panel with all of these women. And, and I feel like a, a baby on here, but uh, so I'll just keep my comments short, <laughs> short and sweet. But um, I just wanted to say, you know, that organizing within this community, organizing within this movement, um, has always been an honor, and I've always um, been, felt very grateful to be able to be able to raise my children in here, and um, and just have that opportunity to be connected to. Although we we were raised in an urban area, I um, my homeland is about four and a half five hours away from here, and so I had the opportunity that that many other people did not have in being able to go back home and being able to practice our ceremonies and, and be on the road in the summer and um, and just visiting and, and be able to, just the opportunity to get out of Oakland and, and be connected back to our relatives and, and our cultural ways back home. And um, and in that, that comes along with it. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, in, in being an AIM baby, I guess a second generation AIM baby, is that um, I, I hear a lot of interesting comments and one is that, you know, people's perception of AIM and people's perception of what the movement is. And what I always say is that for me, the movement was always grounded in a place of, of spirituality and love. That was the movement that I was raised in. And um, and so I try to, to carry that along with my children today and, and organizing within my own community. There's um, obviously uh, barriers that we've come across and sometimes it's concerning because there is a lot of abuse um, out there and like Kareem mentioned there's a lot of people that mention you know that you know are out there front and center that want to say that they're warriors but when it comes down to it you know they're they're not out there conducting themselves in, in those traditional ways they're out there um, thinking that they can abuse people and thinking that you know bullying their way around is um, you know, is, is the way of being a warrior, and it's not. And so, even in my own community here, I faced harassment um, stemming from, from sexual harassment, from physical threats. When I've, you know, had my daughter, who was maybe four at the time, right, sitting on my lap. And, um, and so we need to be able to, to step up and support one another in that. And in my experience, it was brushed off as something that was, um, you know, people thought, oh, you must have some sort of personal relationship, you know, with this person that's harassing you, you must have, you know, like, you know, when you're little and they say, oh, that person must just like you, you know, just ignore it. And it just continued and continued. And, um, and it's not, it's not that, it's, it's more than that, you know, and, and I never did have, have a personal relationship at all, but it was knowing that, you know, this individual had a history of abuse of women within our community and um, and not tolerating it and not taking orders because I was a woman and not taking orders um, in, in that and, and just the whole issue around feeling threatened um, as, as women, as a young woman speaking up. Um, I guess that's all I've, that I want to say about that but as Yvonne mentioned, you know, that, that we're, sur we're survivors, you know, we're survivors of rape, we're survivors of abuse in that myself personally and so I just wanted to put that out there you know because in the way that we're approached sometimes in the way that we're approached um, by men you know just you know keep that in mind next time in, in the way that you approach us and the way that that uh, you approach the women and so with all respect to everyone here to our brothers that set this table up for us to everyone that stepped outside and took a smoke break Hopefully they can come back in, um, but I'm going to pass this back on to my elders.